huge mismatch between what young people can offer and what the world needs. We have very high unemployment in this country. In fact, there is very high unemployment on this continent in Africa. And you don't have to feel like it's just here that this is a big problem, but worldwide, one of the biggest issues we have is unemployment for youth. And for me, that is very hard to understand because when I was stationed in Hungary, uh, studying, doing some volunteering work, I was called by HR companies reaching out to me, saying, hey, can you please come and work here? We really need the skills that you have. And just looking at some people just have it easier because I, I grew up speaking a lot of languages, so I kind of had that for me. And there are so many companies that need a lot of talent for them to work, but the youth that we bring up, they're just not bringing the talents that we need. So if you look at this com country, for example, we have almost half of youth not contributing to society. Half of youth not really knowing what is my purpose in life. What is, why am I important? Why do I even exist? And this can release a lot of depression and can be very sad. Now I like to think five generations down the line and think about what will they say about this era. They might talk about that this is the era about when the first computers came up and they started using technology, but they had a society system where half of youth didn't really do anything. Now, this is a very sad story to tell, and it's a story that I don't want to go into. I would much rather have them talk about, that was the first era where they were able to find the potential of youth, the first era where they saw how can they gauge our youth, how can they bring the most out of them? For them to have a huge contribution to society and the whole world started thriving, you started thriving. Now I would like you to just take a minute and think about what your home would look like if youth in your home would be thriving, if there would be young people that get up five in the morning and say like, I have such a long list of things I want to do and I want to reach it all and I want to develop so much. What would your home look like? What would the communities look like? What would Swakop Moon look like if all of you would be up five in the morning, running around and just want to achieve a lot of things? It might look very nice. If you go in further, what would the whole country look like? What would Namibia look like? And if you add it up, it's a ripple effect. What would the whole world look like if you would have thriving youth? Now, I would like to tell you about the story about the boy, a young boy that never started thriving. And it's the story of Picasso's son. Picasso was one of the greatest artists in his time and did lots of very good things, had very nice pictures and considered himself to be the king, the master of painting, someone that was born with all the skills and he was just there shining in all the attention that he got. But what you don't look at is the son that he had that was growing up in the shadows of his father. He was never able to step out of that shadow because he felt like he would never be able to live up to the expectations of his father. He would never be as good as his father. He would never get all the credit that he's given. And this ended up in him never getting the courage to start thriving to start looking for his own potential or his own contribution to society. So he ended up being someone that was never able to take care of himself. And I think this story is very important because a lot of times you say, yes, you're successful, but because you're fortunate, you had the good schools, you had everything. This kid had an artist as a father that was super successful and he was never able to make it. The problem in this whole story is what we are not looking at is the ladder of success that Picasso went through. Picasso, at a very early stage in his life, he started drawing. He drew pictures day after day, all day, thousands of pictures in a very young age. And all those pictures that he drew brought him step by step all the skills that he had. And that's how he became good. Because he found very early what he loves to do. And he practiced and practiced and practiced. And that's one of the strongest messages I would, would like to give you, is that 
Everyone really needs to go through this ladder of success. There is no way around it. You can't just wake up one morning and be a very successful CEO that really knows how to run the business. And the big problem I see that we have in this world is that youth has wrong role models. Most of the role models that we see, they maybe they're singers, they're doing something and you look like, oh, those guys, they're just lucky, they met the right person, now they have the right contract, and they were just born to be successful, or they just have money, or they're just fortunate because they have rich parents. You never see in the news the struggle and the practice that it takes for them to get there. So everybody keeps on forgetting and acting like, yes, it's, you know, if you're successful, you were born that way, if you're not successful, you were born that way. But it's not like that. Everyone must take those steps. And the earlier we can realize what we're passionate about and what we really want to do, the earlier we can start climbing those steps and the earlier we can become the people that we really want to do to be. I would like to talk a bit about myself. I was very fortunate in growing up uh, with a lot of different cultures. I have a Swedish mother, I have a Hungarian father, and I grew up in Switzerland. I grew up in a small village, and as you might know, Switzerland has a lot of mountains, so my world view was very limited, because wherever I looked, there was just another mountain, so it was very close. And one of the most interesting stories I heard growing up in that village is, the teacher came to us and said, you know, there is this story about this young boy who's walking with his mother here in the town, and asking the mother, uh, Mommy, are there also people living behind that mountain? So you can imagine that young people, they live in a small box or you live in a society and you don't really see beyond it until you go and explore it. So me growing up in that village, I saw the whole world being a bit gray. I didn't really understand it. And I also went through like school and they tried to make me someone that starts working later on. And I really didn't understand what is my role in this? Am I really good at what they are teaching in school? And I didn't feel my place. And the point where everything changed is when I moved out of the country and I joined the largest youth run organization in the world. And I started interacting with people from all over the world. I started seeing the world. And by the time I started seeing the world, I started understanding it. And that was the point where I realized what I can contribute to the world. Because I understood it and I could match it with what I'm passionate about and what I can bring. That was the only time where I started thriving. And ever since that point, I've been climbing those steps. I've been developing and I've been using my life successfully. There are four key points that I took out of this experience so far. First one, I learned how to be self-aware which means I learned how to explore my passion and focus on my strength. I know this is what I'm good at. I like intercultural activities. I like traveling all around the world and making deals. That's what I like, so I started doing it and I started focusing on building and becoming better at that because that's my true potential in this world and that's what I can give. The second thing is I learned how to be solution-oriented. I learned how to adapt in various situations, in various cultures, where you can very fast feel uncomfortable. But I started going up those ladders to be very good in adapting and understanding different cultures and work with it. The third point is I learned how it feels to empower others. One of the greatest things that you can have in life is the impact that you have on others. That's what I experienced makes me the happiest. And being in a situation where you can start engaging a lot of young people for them to be more than just an average person or more than someone that just is around to, ex I don't know, go um, to give like the expectations so just to live in a world where they just have to yeah, do what society expects from them and get out of that box and start doing what they're passionate about and giving so much more to the world. The fourth point that I have is I learned how to be a world citizen. And to be a world citizen is very hard because everyone comes and asks you, where are you from, what are you doing? And 
that question takes me like half an hour for them to go through where I come from, what defines me, what do I care about. And I have to admit that I became a world citizen, caring about the whole world, caring about all the issues, all the cultures, and how we can work together to make this world a better place. In one of the many languages I grew up with speaking, we have a saying, Et oran kulch, mindan autoba bailik. It means a golden key fits every door. Now what I want to tell you is, despite the society that you grow up in, despite any circumstances, it doesn't matter what circumstances you have, it doesn't matter what challenges you have, it doesn't matter what barriers you have. If you have a golden key, it can lock any door that is your true potential. And how you get this golden key I put it up in the way of cooking. So, to get this golden key that we all seek to unlock your potential, or the key that you could give to you, here is the key unlock your youth potential. How to make it is first of all, you need to get fired up. You need to start getting out of your comfort zone to try new opportunities for you to see what am I passionate about. What gets me going? What inspires me? If I think about it like, yeah, you want to do more and you just automatically by yourself, no one has to tell you, start practicing or start doing it more. You just love doing it. So find what you love. The second thing, it's not just enough that you admire a task. You need to start finding where do I get the skills for it? Where do I get the knowledge for it? And is there an environment that can give me the confidence to grow in the area that I'm super loving? The third part in the cooking is the main dish and it's practice. As mentioned before, you have to step on each ladder of success and only by starting early and practice and practice and practice and step through each level is how you can become successful. And in the end, you start performing, you start shining. And that's the part where you have the golden key, where you start shining and unlocking all the doors of the potential that you have in society. Now, one of the things that I, I really feel bad about is having a lot of bad role models in this for youth and how they can't really get the most out of themselves and just missing totally where like, they can get in or how they can get their whole um, input for what they will be doing. So the greatest gift that you can give to you is first of all, push them. And I don't mean push them into the water for them to learn to swim because that would be a bit dangerous, but push them out of their comfort zone, out of their everyday regular life push them to do a new sport, or push them to start singing in a choir, or push them to, I don't know, start dancing on the beach and, and then get the attraction. Just push them to start doing things, because that's the only way they will realize what they are able of. The second thing, empower confidence. There is no way someone that gets pushed out of their comfort zone and doesn't have the confidence to do anything in it will like it and start developing from it. So just make sure that they have the environment where you encourage them to do something, but also they feel secure in doing that. And the third thing, stop hiding your ladder of success. You all went through life, you all had your hard times. You all might run a business or be CEOs of a company, but you had a lot of steps that you had to take. And don't act like, yes, now that I'm so successful and talented, I, I, it was very easy. No, show them that you had to walk through the whole process so they can understand that, yes, I need to start now. The earlier they realize that they have to do it, the better they will become and the more they can give to society. So I would like you guys to just imagine that you have a pen in your hand and you are almighty and you have the ability to draw the world how you would like it to look like. And my question to you is, what would that world look like? 
what world would you design? In the latest news, we have heard that we are the first generation that could end poverty. Now my question is, the world that you would draw, would it be without poverty? And do you believe that this is possible? We heard a lot of talks today talking about we need better education, we need to be better at implementing, we need to be awesome. So there are a lot of things that we need to be and everyone is getting their personal motivation to achieve it. So imagining that all of us have this pen and we start drawing the, the world how we want to be it and we start giving our impact. But my question is, who will coordinate this whole thing? Who will take responsibility for making this happen in time so we can see a better world by 2030? And this is the question I want to leave you with today. Thank you so much.